Quilt, and I'm here to do the next part in our Harley Treads quilt. I think we're on part five, if I'm not mistaken, and we are working on the E and F blocks. So this month we are going to do nine blocks, but five of them are going to be super easy. And so let's get started. So again, we have our grid, and we're making our E and F blocks this month and again I will go ahead and put a screenshot of this up so that you can freeze your camera take a screenshot so that you can have the pattern for the E blocks we need to make them 18 by 12 and we need four of them for this layout and then for our F blocks, it's written kind of small here, so you probably can't read, but they are six by six, and you need five of those. Now, we have been working on this project for a while, so I have gone ahead and made my blocks this month. If you want to see how I've been preparing these blocks, look at the previous sessions where I made blocks A, B, C, and D. Those give you a little bit more detail into how I'm actually piecing my units. So for this t-shirt unit, for my E's, I needed to have four that measured 18 by 12. So some of my shirts were small, so I didn't want them floating all the way out to the 12. So I left my inch and a half to two inches on each side so that I can press without getting onto the logo of the shirt. So this is my E1 block, my E2 block. I'm actually going to add a one inch strip over here, but I did not do that yet because I want to wait until I put it into the quilt and select my fabric. On my E3 block, I put this frame, the flame fabric all the way around. And then on my E4 block, I just needed one piece on the opposite side. Now for my F blocks, I need five of them. So I'm going to be mostly using these little pocket units that I cut off the front of the shirt. I went ahead and squared all of these up to six and a half inches. They'll be six inch finished. So I just have a lot of these so that I have something to choose from as we are doing this quilt top. And so I do not have these in any particular use order. I will just pull them as I need. I do have this one with the pocket where I have stitched the top part down. I will be using that one also. And then I had one that had a smaller logo and I actually cut it four and one half by six and a half. And depending on where I use it in the quilt, I'll add something on top, bottom, and sides if needed. So for right now, it's just four and a half by six and a half. So the next step is that I am going to go ahead and start sewing as many of these pieces together as I can. Now I have been looking at my grid and now we're going to get into a lot of partial seaming and that's the reason why I made this so that I can give you some experience with using partial seaming as well. So the first one that's pretty simple is that we're going to take a B block and sew one of our little F squares to it. And when we sew this to here, we want it to connect on this side. But what I want to do is I want to stop stitching about an inch and a half before the end. So when I'm stitching, I'm going to stitch down, but I'm going to stop right at that inch and a half. I don't want to go any further than that line. I want to have a little tail hanging out so whatever gets connected here can be connected when it's time. So I have already been connecting pieces in the previous video. I think on part C and D I started connecting pieces. So I have this A block here is attached to this BC unit here that I sewed together. And then I also sewed this D unit onto here. 
Now, the next thing that I need to do up here in order to complete piecing this unit is I know you to sew this same F unit that I did down here, but I want to sew it onto this D and I want to start sewing from the edge and stop an inch and a half before I get to the end. So I'm, once I do that, I can then take my BC block that is already sewn here and connect it to this line. I have the entire line there now. Then I can go ahead and add this F unit to this block and I want to stop again as I'm coming down one quarter of an inch so that I got room to get in here and piece out the rest of it that's not here. Once it's connected to here, this B, this D and E block that's sewn together can now go onto this side. So I'm going to start sewing these pieces and then I'm hoping that I can take you out to my deck at some point today and show you how these pieces are looking as they're pieced. But I'll see you out on my deck. I'm on my deck and I have done a little bit of sewing but I didn't want to sew everything so I could explain a little bit of it to you. But I'm going to show you my grid again and I have drawn an imaginary line across where I want to stitch the completed first half of this quilt and there are going to be certain places where I'm not going to be able to stitch today because I'm waiting on these sections to be filled in. So I'm going to pick the camera up. It's probably going to be a little jerky at times, but bear with me on this part. So we were talking about sewing partial seams. So down here on this bottom one, I have added the pocket here and I sewed that down with a partial seam so it sewed all along and then I stopped about one and a half inches from the end and that piece is just laying there. I have sewn my B unit to an E unit so that piece is ready. I had already previously done this section in the last video. I have another B block here that's just laying in position for right now. So it's just laying in position, nothing is attached to it. And then this section here, I have sewn in a partial square here where it's sewn up to here and not sewn in that section. I've sewn my strip onto my E here and also sewed it onto the, um, the E block onto a D block. So I am just gradually working my way around. I also have a partial seam here where I sewed one of the F blocks to a B block. A D block, I think. That's a D block. So yes. So, what I'm going to do is completely connect this top portion together by sewing this seam through here, this seam, and then this top piece will be together. This bottom section, I could sew all of this in, but I'm again going to wait for these two pieces to come because it would be bulky handling to hold it while I just add these two pieces on. So I'm going to actually wait to add these pieces together. But I can go ahead and sew this B, C block onto the E, B block here. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew those, but I wanted you to see how you actually do the partial seaming before I sewed it together and then you couldn't see the different pieces that I had. So I will see you in a minute with a completed photo. I'm back and I have the entire top portion down the side on the end completely sewn. I still have this block here as one single piece. This is still one single piece. These two are put together. I stopped sewing right here and then this is a single piece. 
So that's what I have so far. And now what I'm going to do is a time lapse of me laying out the other blocks that we have sewn just so you can see the positioning. And if you want, you can go ahead and sew your two F blocks to an E and then attach it to a D block. So if you can do a little bit more sewing, but I want to first lay it out so you can see what we have, which blocks we have made. So I have roughly laid out all of the blocks that we've made except for the little small elf blocks because they are going to be more in filler spaces. But this is what you should have sewn now. And again, like I said, over in this area would be where your F would go on top and bottom of the E block, the Harley Davidson with the skeleton head with wings block is. So now I have my remaining blocks. I'm just going to go ahead and place them in the grid as well. And so I can get a visual of how it's going to look. So we have approximately 10 to 11 spaces that we need to fill. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. My completed quilt top without the remaining F blocks being added in. As I said, they will be added in as spacers throughout where needed according to their colors. So this is my actual plan. This is it for this video. I will see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Also click the bell to be notified of new uploads. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.